Hello there, welcome back. This time we are going to be using the technique of blending modes to completely change the look of this portrait shot. What we're going to do here is, so we've got this portrait. We also will be using another image which looks like this. Okay, this is referred to as a word cloud. Okay, I'll be talking more about that uh, later on. But basically what we'll be doing is we'll be superimposing this these words onto the face here in such a way that it looks like these words have been painted on the skin. Okay, so it's a very, very popular effect called as the typography uh, effect. Okay, now coming back to the things about uh, the thing about the word cloud. Okay, later on after we've done completing this edit. Okay, after you know how to do it, I'll also be showing you in an optional video which will come after this, how to create your own word cloud so that you can use your own words also. That's completely going to be option in optional in case you want to use it. But right now, let's get started with this edit. So first of all, we don't need the whole image here. Okay, we just need the parts where we can see the skin. So that's going to be the face and basically the hand. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm quickly going to crop this. Okay. And later on towards the end, I'll also be talking about when you use your own portrait image, any kind of portrait image that you have clicked, what are the things that you should be looking out for when you're editing this typography face edit. Okay. So now I'm happy with this. Now the next thing and one of the very important things that you have to do is, first of all, this can be done on a colored image like this, but it just looks much better and more dramatic when you do it on a black and white image, okay? So we are first of all gonna convert this image into black and white. Now, usually that's done by hitting the effects, the FX option there, and then the black and white filter there. I'm not gonna do that right now because my phone is on the airplane mode. And if I were to, was to use Wi-Fi, because remember, effects use uses Wi-Fi, okay? So I'll have to switch to that other mode, that the other view that we have been already seeing. It's not very convenient. So what I'm gonna do here is simply, I'm again gonna go to tools. I'm gonna to open that adjust settings. And I can also create a black and white image by going to saturation and simply turning the saturation to zero. Okay, because this part doesn't require the internet. So then I don't have to switch the view, okay? So one job is done. Now is an important part here. Let's look at that word cloud again that we just saw. Now one of the things that you can clearly notice here is that there's just two colors. Black is the background, white are the words, okay? The words have to be painted on the face but they should not come anywhere else on the background. Okay, so we will be using the blending mode of darken or multiply but basically the darken family blending mode. We, since we know that it doesn't have to come on the background, if we can turn this background black, completely black, we know that what happens in darken, the light parts lose out. Okay, they don't win, right? The font or the words in the word cloud are white. So if they were to clash with a completely black background, they will lose out and they will not be seen on the background and they'll only be seen on the face because face has a lot of different brightness levels. So it'll just superimpose very well, but they'll completely lose the battle to things like the hair and things like the background if we are able to turn this background black, okay? So our first job is to somehow find a way of turning this black. Now, you can simply take a paintbrush and actually paint it black also, but since we already know how to make selections, we'll do this by the selection method. So let's start this process. All right, so in order to select the background, I'm going to use the cutout tool again, which we've used before in one of the images. So I'm going to select cutout. We want to select the whole person. So I will be selecting person in an automated way. And you can see it's kind of done a decent job. We'll just quickly, uh, you know, get some things which are important. Now, for example, this part here, okay, it's left that it's not going to be important anyway, because we are going to be turning this background black since the hair are black. It's just gonna merge. So you don't have to be too uh, careful about the edges in these shots, especially if the hair are black, okay? What we have to kind of slightly be careful about is these, uh, this person has these gaps between the hair. So we'll just have to make sure these gap, the background hair is not being taken into account. So we can switch over to the razor tool, okay? Really decrease the size. And I don't really have to be too careful here, okay? Because the background will be anyway being turned into black. So just quickly speed up the video and wherever I see these gaps, I'm just basically removing them, okay? Okay, 
All right, so I've been able to make the selection. Now wasn't too much of work. And now I'm just gonna hit the check mark and it's gonna make that background disappear. Now is the fun part, okay? This is where the real fun lies. So we're gonna go to, first of all, we have to put a black background behind, right? So we're gonna do the similar thing which we've done before. We're gonna go to draw because we need the layers for this, okay? So we're inside the draw uh, function right now. I'm gonna hit the top icon, which is for layers. Okay, and this time, we remember, I told you that by default, there's already an empty layer that comes. We're simply gonna, this time, fill this with black. So it's already selected. Okay, Pixart gives it by default. We're simply gonna hit that jar icon below and select black. And right now it's above, we're gonna just shift it down. So here you go, if I just tap this to remove, you can see the first part here is done. Now let's continue. All right, so now is the part where we'll be adding that word cloud and superimposing it on this image. So again, we'll have to go back to our layers. This is where we'll be adding that new layer. So I'm gonna hit this. This time, we don't want an empty layer. Remember that word cloud is nothing but a photograph itself, like an image. So we're gonna select photo layer and it's gonna open up that same gallery. We're gonna select this particular word cloud that I've given to you so you can Open that, I'm just gonna crop this, okay? So it gives you this option to crop it before you put it as a layer, so that it doesn't unnecessarily stretch it or transforms it in any way. You can also select one of the shapes from below, like a square shape and all, but it's not needed. If you just crop it around the body, around the boundary, wherever you need the stuff, that is fine. I'm gonna hit the check mark and it's gonna come here as a new layer on top. So that's why we can't see anything behind. We can't see the portrait image right now. This is where, now is the time to finally use the blending mode. So we wanna tell Pixart, listen, blend it with the image below, the layer below, in such a way that you keep the darker things, okay? That's why the background will win and most of the things will merge on the face. So instead of normal here, I'm gonna select, we, we're gonna try both darken and multiply and see which one looks better. Remember, both of them are from the dark darken family, okay? So let's try darken first. This is this beautiful, this looks pretty good. Let's also try multiply. Yeah, so remember, we saw the difference before. I told you, darken and multiply pretty much work very similarly. It's just that multiply will, you know, since it's multiplying the numbers, okay, it's gonna produce uh, a slightly darker looking image. Okay, so multiply the values, plus is dividing it by 255, which makes it towards go to, towards the color values of black. So just again, darken. This also looks fine to be frank and we're gonna be making some changes but I think this looks better because just giving, it's, I think it's, uh, since it's darkening the things, what hap what's happening with multiply is it's uh, near the shadows like the eyes and the nose and the jaws, it's kind of making that shape come out. It's not looking too flat. So I think this is looking better but this is too strong right now. So we're gonna decrease the opacity of this, okay? Now in Photoshop, if I open up the layers, in Photoshop, if we were there right now, we can simply with this top layer selected, we could have reduced the opacity like this, the slider below. But can you see here in PixArt, it actually is treating, since we blended it, okay? It's not a separate layer, since we blended it, it's treating it as one layer. So it's actually decreasing the opacity of the portrait image also, and you're seeing the background underneath. So this doesn't work like Photoshop here. Photoshop would have been much more convenient, but there is a way out, which is if we take this layer, okay, and we simply copy this, like if we can make a duplicate on top, we can do that by uh, tapping on the three dots above it, okay? So just the three dots here, if I tap on that, we can copy this layer, okay? And there's a new layer that comes on top. So anytime you copy your layer and creates, uh, it creates a duplicate and puts it right on top, okay? Now from this layer, what we can do is we can actually decrease its opacity to control the opacity of whatever we did till now. So just see, it's completely up to us. If we take the opacity to zero, then basically it means the top layer that we can create it basically doesn't exist. But since we wanted the effect to be slightly more subtle on the face, you wanna stop somewhere it's completely optional, like this is subjective, which how much ever you want. I think this, till this much, is looking fine, okay? And finally, the last step is gonna be, so I think this is looking really nice. The, the last step is gonna be that, remember this is also now coming on the, the clothes 
even here on the next to the hand where the clothes are there it's coming we only want to have this effect that it looks like this has been painted on the face so we don't want it everywhere we only want this on the skin wherever we see skin that's where we want that effect but then it look really really good okay so first of all i think i'm going to decrease the opacity slightly even or rather increase the opacity to decrease the effect slightly okay 30 take it to 38 okay and now in order to do that what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing okay we're going to take this we're going to come back to our original portrait make sure that is highlighted and simply hit copy now it's again put a new layer on top but this time what we're going to do is with this selected remember we have this eraser tool with us down below if we take the eraser tool wherever we run right now the eraser it's going to delete from this top layer and start revealing whatever we've done underneath which is what we want which is this if i hide this see hide it so we can basically kind of start to with the eraser delete this top layer only on the face part to reveal this we're not going to run the eraser anywhere else okay so i hope that's clear let's uh, do that right so with this top layer selected i'm going to again hit the eraser okay here will give you this time a different types of shapes of the eraser okay so make sure you select this one on the right you'll see like the soft edge brush tool so just select that okay tap once more to get those settings we want to slightly increase the size this time it actually here doesn't show you the preview of the brush make it slightly big because the original by default when it's set to 10 is very small okay so make it slightly big and now just carefully start to run your finger on the skin okay now one of the tips here start painting in this way okay so like i'm just doing this this lift your finger again and again so that you can use the undo function if you make a mistake because here there's no restore brush so you'll have to start the process again if you make uh, a mistake okay so what will happen is if you have many strokes like this you'll have the undo option otherwise if you just don't lift your finger and in one stroke you paint everywhere if you undo it's gonna you know undo the whole thing okay so especially near the tricky areas you can just like here i can go fast no problem so what i would suggest is wherever you see proper big areas of skin you can definitely paint this okay if you that's your call if you want to do it on the hair i don't want to do it so i'll just want to keep it on the skin and I'm right now I'm going to avoid the area near the eyes I'm going to come back to that later right I'm just we are going to do it there also but we're going to decrease the opacity of the brush even on the nose we're going to decrease the opacity of the brush almost kind of mimicking it how you would actually do it if you were painting this person's face okay a lot of people like to simply go with full opacity everywhere that's also fine if you want to do that uh, I like to kind of go according to the face and where the lighting is falling, okay? In my opinion, it just makes it look slightly more realistic, like you actually painted some, okay? I do, you should be zooming in and not leaving out areas like this. You can see I've kind of gone out of bounds. So here, that's what I'm saying. So you can, I can do this now, okay? Because there's, it, this was a separate stroke. If I just did everything in one or two strokes, I would have to do the work again, okay? So is fine and now also on the hands and i don't i can easily do this go out of bounds here because that multiply mode helped us right it didn't take those words out of bounds because of the black background and the multiply blend mode. only near his clothes i have to be careful that's all okay this is fine and now for the nose and the eyes i do want this but i want to decrease the opacity of the brush like to 49 50 percent okay maybe more for the eyes because definitely if you are painting we definitely nose yes we can still paint but eyes we're definitely not going to paint right so decrease the opacity to even 10 and just slowly do it mainly on the top parts of the eyes okay and i think this is looking be good okay when you're happy with it okay
Okay, sometimes this can take practice. You might require multiple attempts. Don't worry, you'll get uh, good with all this. Once we're done with this, I'm going to hit the check mark. It's going to ask you, should you, you want to save, save a draft? Uh, one advice I can give you in such edits, layer-based edits is that keep saving drafts often. Okay, that's because if you lose your progress, you don't have to start all over again. Because once I hit the check mark here, the layers will be gone. I can't come back to that unless until I had saved a draft, okay? So right now I'm gonna hit discard, but you should keep saving the drafts. And you can see we have got our final image. If you further wanna refine this, what we can do is we can go to tools, play a bit, make it darker or brighter by going on to adjust settings, going on to contrast, and maybe if I wanna make it slightly darker, make the words stand out more, but make the image darker, I can do this, or the other way around if I wanna fade it a bit. It's completely up to you, you can even, Right now my internet is not on, but if I had the internet, you can even go over, so let's say I don't want to do this by the way, uh, so let me just press this. You can even go to effects here. There are a lot of different faded effect filters that look very good with this typography effect, okay? So you believe filters are easy to use, just go to effects, find some cool filters to try out, keep trying out a lot of different filters and see where you get a nice faded look with this. That usually looks great here. I'm not showing you right now that because then it will require the internet. We just have to change the view and it's not a tough step at all because the main thing here was I wanted to show you how to do this in a seamless manner using uh, blending modes. Now, one thing before we end this video, first of all, if you plan to use your own image, like another portrait, one of the things you should keep in mind is this looks good when the image has a bit of highlights and shadows. That means the lighting on the face is such that there's some dark areas in the shot where the lighting wasn't there and there's some bright areas. The opposite is flat lighting, where everything is bright on the face. There, this doesn't work very well because the words, they just look equal everywhere. So it kind of gives a very flat feeling and you don't make out the shape of the person after this. these words have been blended, blend, uh, you know, blended on the face. So it kind of doesn't give that mask-like feeling, or the sorry, the paint-like feeling on the face, okay? So use it with portraits which have some shadows and some highlights, like a depth to it, dramatic, moody portraits. That's where this looks the best. Of course, you know that the background, if it's already a black background, nothing like it. If not, you know what to do. Finally, in the next video, if you plan to do this on your own, there's a good chance you might want to put your own words, whatever you value in life, here, like I value peace, happiness, and all these things that I've, that's why I created a word cloud like that. So the next video is gonna be completely optional, but it's gonna be for people who wanna create their own word clouds like the one I had created here. So I'm gonna be showing you how to do that using one very, very cool tool, okay? So that'll be completely optional, up to you. After that, I'm gonna be seeing you in the next edit. I hope that you like this one. Bye for now.